All right, um, U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Railroad Administration, docket number FRA 2009-0035-RIN-2130-8. Comments of the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineering Engineers and Trainmen and the United States Transportation Union will respect, um, with respect to proposed rules for conductor certification, Title 49 CFR Part 242. The comments are submitted by the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineer and Trainmen as Division of the Rail Conference International Brotherhood Teamsters, or BLET, um, which is duly designed for the recognized collective bargaining representative for the craft and class of locomotive engineer employed on all Class 1 railroads in the United Transportation Union, UTU. Uh, UTU, UT, which is duly designated, recognized collective bargaining representative for the various service crafts and um, class classes, holsters, remote control operators, yard master employed on all Class One railroads. Thus, the UTU and the Union and Transportation Union, United Union, United Transportation Union, the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineer Trainmen are duly designated, recognized by the collective bargaining representatives for all training. Employees on all Class 1 railroads, the Brotherhood of Locomotive Eng Engineering Trainmen in the United Transportation Union also represent operating for the employees of the numerous Class 2 and Class 3 railroads. Consequently, the proposed certification of the conductors published by the Federal Railroad Administration has a significant impact on the members. We think the effort, we think the effort of Federal Railroad Administration for the advance for the consideration of these comments, the Federal Railroad Administration noted in the preamble of the notice proposed rulemaking NPRM. FR, the, FR, the Federal Railroad Administration expects the Railroad Safety Advisory Committee, RASAC, Conductor Certification Work Group, and the continued meeting after publication of the notice of the proposed rulemaking to consider configuration changes in Title 49 CFR Part 240 Qualification Certification of Locomotive Engineers. We also recognize the working group reached reach consensus on on the majority of the proposed rule, we have a rapid respondents in several areas. The Federal Railroad Administration has specifically requested comments and after consideration of proposed rule contacts with our experience with the Title 49 CFR Part 240 provisions, we believe it is necessary to revisit and add comments on some of the proposed sections of this rule. We look forward to making the FRA and the future working group meetings to address these other comments submitted by the Conductor Certification National Notice pro 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 um, pro Proposed Rulemaking Docket. All right, sub so, uh, a general section two forty two one minimum. The Federal Railroad Administration had relied heavily on Part two forty in the development of conductor certification regulations contained and proposed by the top Part two forty two special uh, specifically in section two forty two one proposed pur purpose and scope. They have Federal Railroad Administration nearly in the identical language um, to the contained with the locomotive engineering certification rule. Moreover, the intent of this rule is clearly provided with the same level of discretion to the railroads that they have in the implementation implementing Part 240. Therefore, we believe it inappropriate to consider how the industry has utilized the discretion of the Federal Railroad Administration, Federal Railroad Administration entrusted to the railroads implement additional and more stringent requirements for the certification of locomotive engineers. The Federal Railroad Administration cannot deny the railroad have repeatedly abused the discretion and exemption of a sudden change in management philosophy on the part of the railroads is misplaced. When the, when the Federal Railroad Administration published its original Part 240 notice of the proposed rulemaking in 1989, it noted that there it's less incidental. incidental. There's less incidental evidence to support the proposition with the similar events receiving the signification department. This departure treatment, the such different success both within and between the railroads for the difference in including decision on whether the particular person will or will not be bought. Brought before the discipline system for the given course for the conduct where I range punishment imposed with the same type of failure to adhere the company rules under circumstances. Um, 73 Federal Registration 80351, December 21st, 2008, quoting 54 Federal Registration Federation, uh, 5089, 50890, 50890, 50890, uh, sorry, 50900, um, December 11th, 1989. <laughs> This 21-year observation it was concerned, was a cornerstone of the FRA historically, consequently stated commitment to the element disparage for treatment for the locomotive engineers, which dates all the way back to the original designation intent for the Part 240. The ID, indeed, with the Federal Railroad Administration, published its first final rule in government locomotive engineering certification in 1991. It stated that railroads will have to have limited authority to deny and revoke, revoke person certification, and the Federal Railroad Administration will be responsible for resolution disputes arising the decision. And I resign. 
certificates. 56, Title 56 Federal Registration 2828229, June 19, 1991, emphasis added. Moreover, the FRA stated in the intent to re reserve the right to exercise limited control in daily administration for each for the railroad program because the Federal Railroad Administration bears responsibility for the manner with which the railroad exercises their discretion since the performance for the railroad under the rule will determine whether the safety purpose is fulfilled. The idea at 28... 2229 The conduct industry has not changed and one iota since the Federal Railroad Administration 21 years old observation concerning widespread departure treatment. Systematic abuse for the provocation process by service of Class 1 railroad forces the FRA to significantly amend the regulatory base for the revocation of the certification, i.e. the five cardinal sins in 1993, Part 240, that had been effective for even 20 years in publication of these amendments the FRA acknowledged. With respect to certain parts, certain types of the operation violations of the court rules that does not um, clear distinguished series of the neg negligible of office offenses railroad believing themselves to be under regulatory mandated to take action of the, for these offenses that might not previously have been subjected to disciplinary action have in some cases decertified employees where FRA had not anticipated such actions for these. For the most part, the railroad actions have been within the letter of the current law. However, given the experience of the Federal Railroad Administration now has been required the need to prevent further revocation of the offenses so minor that the FRA had not anticipated there being on the basis of revocation. The FRA has no, decided to act quickly correct on the situation. Title 58 Federal Registration 8 and 18987 emphasis at 18987. Approximately five years after uh, having to amend Part 240 for the first time because of the outrageous application by the industry, the FRA published another proposed rule. See Title 63 Federal Registration 50626 through 50658, September 22, 1998. The time of the FRA was forced in to address leg legitimacy for the compliance of testing circumstances under the failure of the compliance test should trigger an adverse certification consequence. The FRA expressed a concern the operational monitoring tests are used with some by some supervising to entrap the engineers in testing that, is un, that are unfair. The Federal Railroad Administration also acknowledges that the complaints have been voiced that some cut tests were conducted in a manner that the make it appear that the true purpose was not monitoring compliance, but more to make it appropriate difficult for the engineer to pass the ID fi at 50636. Indeed, FRA was aware of quoted allegation that super, super, some supervisors have been able to get engineers decertified by the hiding the fuses um, under the bucket and only revealing the fuses to the engineer at the point where it is impossible for the engineer to stop the train. Although the FRA has not observed such tests, the agency currently considers an improperly improperly conducted operational tests, i.e. the tests not conducted according to the railroad's own operating rules, such alleged bucket tests to be an improper reason for city certification. All right, the ID of the zero five six four one, um, or sorry, five zero six four one five zero six four one. This issue, such concerning the Railroad Safety Advisory Committee working with a group on Part Two Forty, reaching the consensus of the FRA. Um, publishing the interpretation in the rule which the FRA adopted, promulgating Section Two Forty Part One Seventeen. FR uh, F three in the nineteen ninety nine Final Rule ID five zero six three six. Not to tear, but despite the numerous re reiterations by the FRA over the Part 240, what is intended to be the strictly limited tool the railroad industry can continue size and cultivated every opportunity to instead of weed. Wield its act, wield in its acts. As the result, the FRA recently impl implemented the third major amendment to the regulation during the brief lifespan. See Title 474, Federal Registration 68173 through 68185, um, December 23, 2009. The Federal Railroad have relied upon Part 240 with the cardinal sins and base for the defining revocable offenses proposed in Part 242. The predictable for the cardinal sins revocation in Part 242 of the violations of the railroad operating rule practice in Title 49 CFR 241-17E. Um, the emphasis added, even after several major revisions in Part 240, in response to the industry abuse that continues to become a persistent flow of the dispute to the various levels of Part 240, the dispute resolution process, the reflection of the tension between the specific regulatory requirement 
right? And a corresponding railroad rule that is more stringent, notwithstanding the most recent amendment to Part 240, will fully expect the railroad manufacturer new scheme to remove the locomotive engineer from performing the certified service of defending the action to hiding the cranks and regulation, cracks and regulation. Although proposed scope of the provision in Part 242 and consistent with the um, more for, um, FRA regulations prior to ongoing experience with the minimum standards established with the scope and frequently result in inconsistent application of unintended consequences and has consequently produced applications primarily, 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 plainly contrary to the FRA intent. The road has re relieved, relied upon gaps in the regulatory language to invent new ways to deny the operative work opportunities and the employee to create economic consequences for undesirable employees. By the manufacturing schemes to avoid compliance with the collective bargaining agreement requirements exceeding with the clear regulatory limitations written in the, the rule, the FRA has effectively encouraged the continuation of the model by permitting the railroad to implement even stricter guidelines by viva oper operating rules proposed to statute 242.1 for the example state the part does not restrict the, restrict the railroad for adopting and enforcing additional more stringent requirements consistent in the, with this part, Title 75, Federal Registration at 69197. Are the FRA has regularly revisited the seemingly clear regulatory language of Part 240 as the regulatory history amply the demonstrates. Although the FRA has rapidly shown the willingness to address agencies' regulations to correct the railroad abuse for the time lapse between the identified abuse and unintended consequences, addressing it into significant harm in individuals without providing them with any means of the redress situation that preceded an amendment to the rule before affecting it, before effect of becoming effective. The body counts have been permitted to act, uh, accumulate while the awaiting the regulatory correction of the abuse is intolerable. The minimum standard approach that has caused a significant problem with the locomotive engineer covered by Part 240, therefore, is no ended of how advantage of the adopting the same concept for certified conductors. Clearly, the scope of the provision in Part 240 is out of balance unless the FRA has acted decisively. Conductors regulated in by Part 242 will suffer the same fate. Labor attempted to persuade the FRA to implement a uniform standard by the Railroad Safety Advisory Committee rulemaking process. The FRA dismissed the law. Labor concerns in favor of the railroad assurance that they would be a responsible act responsible. Labor is unaware aware of the FRA's reluctancy to limit the railroad on un un impeded right to implement their own rules that is like unlike the FRA which will, will uh, use its authority and institute Uniform standards give the history it is inevitable some of the railroads will explore new ways to design conductors to work opportunities rely upon regulations to shield them from the economic consequences for their actions as they have the administrative with the Part 240. In this regard, the FRA is more familiar with its industry two-step dance and whether the arguments before the disciplinary arbitration boards that may back pay cannot be awarded with the revocation periods while... Making assertions in the parallel 240 dispute resolution process, the FRA lacks the authority that in order to pack the railroad revocation denial certification is reversed. It is unreasonable for the, um, to expect the railroad will act diff differently administrated in Part 242. This is our view with the respect to minimum standards and set forth with the purpose and scope section reflect the two-decade-long experience of locomotive engineering certification. The FRA recently overhauled the Part 240 with the third time in the response to the industry abuse. The FRA continues to provide with such the discretion of the railroads that should not accept the different results for the in implementation of this rule. The FRA cannot ignore the fact that the railroads are unable to unwilling to restrain their certification programs administrated from the evading the regulatory purposes to create unintended consequences for their employees since the FRA is unwilling to constrain the by the, the railroads by implementing a uniform rule. We propose the several changes that propose regulation are unwarranted according with the urge for the FRA to require the railroads to one identify the program required by the Part 242 101 Appendix B of this part where they intend to adopt the addition enforce an additional more stringent requirements for the conductors and when the railroad implement implement new additional more stringent requirements the FRA must consider the material modification modifications to program process the new requirement through the procedure outline and approval process. The term material modifications also m must be defined by the FRA. We recognize that it is most difficult to write the definition encompassing the broad concept between, but given the fact the FRA will often revisit the, the, this rule, the FRA will have the ample opportunity to refine the definitions. Given the long implementation period of one year of the January 1, 2012, along with the railroad industry's 20 plus center experience in locomotive engineering certification, with the FRA correctly stated in the preamble, can easily be identified that the 75 Federal Registration 69172. It is unreasonable to expect the railroad to identify those areas which where each of the railroad will implement an additional more stringent requirements for the conductors.
um, statute 242, 17 definitions, and eligible and, and eligible and ineligible or ineligibility for the other terms. Now, ineligible and ineligibility are defined in Part 240, but the use of the terms and designed by the periods of the time locomotive engineers rendered unemployed by the railroads. Application regulation is which established by Part 240 with the relevant employee, which is termed to describe the unemployment status. In discussion 242, 111, prior safety conductor that is a motor vehicle operator, the FRA recognize, recognizes the inherent unfairness of the structure Part 240 with the yet proposed to extend that the injustice for the conductor will be covered by Part 240 for the um, for the FRA concluded as a matter of the fairness the railroad should not revoke the deny otherwise make the personal ineligible certification until the person has received the due process from the state agency taking the action against the motor vehicle license and otherwise the action um, pursuant to this part might be deemed premature since the American judicial system is based on the concept of the person being innocent until proven guilty. Title 75, um, Federal Registration 69174, is equally fundamental and unfair with the FRA to require the economical consequences of pensions be triggered. Prior to any determination culpability being made, it is practical in the expiration of the FRA considers itself powerless to require the railroad to pay back wages when the revocation decision is overturned, while at the same time requiring the certification super super suspension to may take place before the, the process is afforded. We contend that it is an illegitimate reason to impose the suspension prior to the uh, employee being provided with the due process that alleged for the violation deemed with a willful violation or otherwise the suspension services no useful purpose for the notation someone will go out go right out and inadvertently come to an additional cardinal sins in prospect pre preposterous as noted, we have experienced significantly difficulty inquiring back wages for the employees who have the certification wrongfully revoked. The dispute with the arbitrator means for the remedies have been negotiated with collective on bargaining agreements. The problem is compounded by the fact that there is no regulatory remedy for the economic loss, including the either revocation or dispute resolution process. As a result, the re reality of the suspension of certification prior to the individual being proposed and provided with due to the process creates a level of potential economic liability for the railroad that drives it to find fault regardless of the genuine capability culpability sorry the FRA uses the phrase for the matter of the fairness preamble to identify the legal concept of the innocent until proven given the basis of the American judicial system that declines to require the due process and order on rule prior to the requiring economical consequences imposed by the FRA they, uh, by the rule the FRA uses the term legally disqualified a definition of ineligible and ineligibility the use of this term disqualified implies that the person previously uh, was previously qualified therefore the definition of ineligibility and ineligibility logically Logically contemplate that the employee has been afforded the due process rights contained in some part E. The definition by very nature is absolute. The use of the term may insert the degree of ambiguity and beauty that the not, not instituted definition proper proposed definition of section 242.17 for the ineligible ineligibility defined the period of the ineligibility may end by the, but the sign is on when it begins the definition of ineligible, ineligible and ineligibility should be at the very least state that that period of the ineligibility may be only be for after the individual has afforded due process Section 242.109E, the proposed uh, rule of the FRA affords the conductor and the opportunity to defend themselves from the railroad allegations prior to imposition economical consequence for the relevant in Part 242.109E states that the opportunity comment should afforded with the person prior to the railroad rendering eligibility decision based on the information. RC Title 75, Federal Registration 69201. The basic concept of the due process should include every provision that could result in the period of ineligibility for the conductors that are covered by the rule. Um, rather than inserting such language in each of the section, we believe the definition of ineligibility and eligibility, ineligible and eligible, eligibility should be amended to address the issue. According, we are, we, accordingly, we are the FRA to amend the definition of ineligible and ineligibility as follows. Ineligible and ineligibility means the person is legally disqualified from serving the certified conductor. The current covers no, a number of circumstances in which the person may not serve as the current certified, com, circum, certified conductor. And then it's strike through. A period of ineligibility shall begin only after the person has afforded the applicable due to the process established by the statute 242.109E, 242.115F, and so Part E may um, cross through or shall end while the, end the conditions condition contained therein are met for. example, the person meets the condition to serve the conductor following an alcohol drug violation pursuant to statute 242.115. 
Medical examiner. The definition of medical examiner should be made of the medical examiner as a medical profession. The FRA should insist that they recognize the duty of the make the insist and inform the other evaluations extent of the employee subject of the rule. Accordingly, we recommend that the definition be amended as follows. Medical examiner means the proper person licensed as the doctor of medicine of the doctor of osteo osteopathy. Uh, as astropathy, uh, astropathy medical examiner will qualify full time salary employee with the railroad, over the railroad. Qualified petition will contract the railroad on a fee for the service of the other base of the qualified participation designed by the railroad to perform functions in connection with the medical evaluation of the employees. As using this rule, the medical examiner owns the duty for the employee by the railroad to make an honest, full, informed evaluation of the condition of the employee. Substance abuse professional. Definition of substance, uh, substance abuse professional also should be amended. The FRA should insist that the substance abuse professional is a medical professional, although they should not be only charged with protecting the public interest profit of the rail, but should be to reflect the goals of successfully treating the patients. Accordingly, we recommend the definition amended as follows. Substance abuse professional means a person who meets the qualification of substance abuse professional is provided with a part 40 with the title of the used and the rule that the substance abuse professional owes the duty of the employee and railroad to make the honest, the fully informed evaluation considered as a mission progress employee. In addition, the FRA should have include the civil penalty of the appendix A for the medical examiner, the substance abuse professional that does not make the on an honest evaluation of the condition progress of the employee. Moreover, the medical examiner, the substance abuse professional who doesn't make the honest evaluation committed with the willful violation of the rules should be subjected to individual liability for the increased penalties such as the willful violation. All right, 242. Nine waiver the federal were accurate, accurately confined with the title 49 part 211 successfully address the issue more over the federal railroad safety of the act of the provided with the statutory right individuals covered by this regulation request that the waiver is considered granted with the warranted and see title 49 u.s standard code 212 two, sorry 201303 d 201 g remove the provisions would have no practical effect of the application of the rule however this conveniently they play People such as the covered with the rule the probably do not have the readily knowledge access to the reference to the U.S. Code with the title 49 CFR Part 211. All right, subpart B, um, program eligibility requirements. It's noted by the FRA that has relied on locomotive engineering certification rule Part 240 as the base of the proposed conductor certification rules of Part 242 of the general statement of the subpart B with the section analysis of the FRA and concluded with it is with Part 240 this proposed rules afford the railroad considerable discretion. Daily administration over the certification program Title 75 Federal Registration 69171 emphasized that of the serious misstatement of the Part 240 history because of the FRA published with the final rule governing locomotive engineering certification 19. 1991, it made it plainly state the railroad will have limited authority to deny revoke person certification. C6, Title 656, Federal Registration 2822829, June 19, 1991, emphasized and added the Part 240 provides the only limited authority for the railroad's preamble for this rule. Should not it should be consistent with the local engineering certification rule state with the railroads will limited authority to deny revoke person certification as well as to do otherwise and would invite the repetition. Repetition of the problems experienced with Administrative Part 240 for the more two decades. See Supra. Statute 242-107. The FRA is aware of the most recent amendment of the local mode of engineering certification rule was driven up beef with the by the railroad. So only one carrier claim to perform one carrier claim performance deficiency by reclassification train service engineers to student engineer status and subsequent performance tests were also claimed to be found deficient. They named the certification um, all, uh, all t altogether determining the local mode of engineers employment and all case of the railroad refused according to the hearing under the Para 240 of the collective bargaining agreement and denied all other elements due to the process. ID at 080350 for the federal justice game the amendment of the part 240 by adding the section 240107 um, of the explicit states. Railroad should um, not reclassify um, certification by any type of the certified railroad um, and certified engineer more restrictive class of the certificate of the, or a student engineer certificate during the person will the certification otherwise valid. We believe that it is appropriate the FRA enforce the prohibition strongly sanctioning conducting the violates the rule when maintaining the railroad to review the act of the responsibility should be the subject of the FRA imposed with the civil penalty should be leaved over the, the administrator of the railroad certification program. 
for violation regulations governing certified employees. We um, contain, can that intended with the scheme such as the plaguing of the administration part 240 with more of the two decades constituting a willful violation of the regulation. The FRA should impose the civil penalties directly against the individual name of the person contact concerning the materials addressed by section 1 of the railroad certification program. Statute 242.111, um, labor voice concern, um, concerned during the working group session that delays the administrative of the request of information made by the state motor vehicle agencies caused by the employee to be rendered ineligible because the driving record had not been forwarded to the railroad before the expiration of the certification. The FRA partially addressed the labor concern, providing that Statute 242.111, the C of the railroad would be required to recertify certify the individual for the additional 60 days in the time the requested information required by the section and that otherwise met with the requirements of Part 242. However, the there will be an instance where the other no fault their own the conduct they have made with the proper request the state agency design provided information prior to the expiration of the 60 day extension the FRA has adopted it to address the issue of statute 242.111F for permitting pertain, the conductor for the railroad petition for the waiver of statute 242.111B requirement. We suggest a more efficient way to handle the problem exists, which is equally effective with the purpose of reviewing the motor vehicle record, determining whether during the 36-month period prior to the railroad certification decision, the candidate for, the, uh, for certification or recertification had been conviction with the, ha, had a conviction from a completed state action to cancel, revoke, suspend, or deny the motor vehicle driver license for either operating the motor vehicle while under the influence impaired with the alcohol-controlled substance, or refusal to undergo such testing as required in state foreign law with the law enforcement official seeks to determine whether the person is operating the vehicle while under influence of alcohol and controlled substance statute 242 111 and if there's no event such a state action the candidate is required to undergo substance abuse professional evaluation to determine whether the active substance abuse disorder exists to follow the whether the program is required by the standard of substance abuse professional c statute 242 11 0 However, the FRA proposes to impose duty on the certified conductor for the candidate for the initial certification report such action within 48 hours of such action with the railroad. See the title of statute 242.111.1 for the self-report. Also, would trigger the substance abuse professional evaluation required by the statute 242.111.0. Um, this review of the state motor vehicle records intended to verify someone in compliance with statute 242.111.1 for the regard of the uh, anticipate the FRA schedule with the civil penalty. The final rule will include the penalty of failure to comply with statute 2 242.111.1 as just part of 240 provides the such penalty when someone subjects the end to their fault their two faults self reported in C title 49 part 240 and appendix A this review the state motor vehicle records that the wouldn't encounter the value, violation of the statute 242.111.1 and exposing the individual civil penalty further in the schedule. All right. We would expect the application for the um, statute 242.111F of the Railroad Safety Board would require the notarized declaration, app David, some other form of the sworn tape, and the note. Know that statute 242.111N incident has occurred with the preceding 36 months of the condition president granting with the waiver of the position. And once, uh, if our assumption is correct, we suggest that the such requirement could be written directly into the rule, thereby relieving the Railroad Safety Board with the burden of having to handle with these matters. Accordingly, we propose that statute 242.111F would be revised and read as follows. If the person requests information pursuant to paragraph H of this section is unable to obtain, this person will shall submit the notarized declar declaration affidavit that has not. As had no incident is described in the statute 242 11 has open has occurred within the preceding of 36 months in order to certify um, a railroad shall certify the recertify a person who has submitted the notarized declaration of the affidavit if in the person otherwise eligibility requirements provided in statute 242 109. All right, 242.115, section of the section and by analysis discusses the substance abuse disorder, alcohol, drug rule, compliance with the section rule, identifies a certain situation where the referral of evaluation by the substance abuse professional required with the preamble to search for the specified in 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 instances identified the rule do not relieve the railroad of the general duty of the appropriate action with other instances attempts to identify the indicator that may warrant the evaluation of substance abuse professional. Specifically, the FRA complains that the declining the job performance extreme mode m mood Swings and irregularity tends to tall, indicating the substance abuse professional evaluation. Strong belief that the guidance the FRA have offered for the railroads indicate that the substance abuse professional evaluation should be removed from the preamble. 
and regularity attendance with ambiguous conceivable concept and moreover the very nature of railroad opportunities employees is regular employment is irregular the guns chief set forth in preamble amble, a, a, any railroad co- implementing an attendance policy that prohibits the employee from taking any time off claiming that anyone who does uh, such as re- irregular attendance and that it penalizes them by requiring that a substance abuse professional evaluation needless uh, to say a few experiences with, with such a policy will chill anyone's desire to take off the even address the cumulative fatigue that require, results from the railroads or regular work schedules, such outcome would consistently with the railroad safety. Extreme mood swings, totally subjective concept that have no place in regulation. In fact, the mood swings frequently can result with the harassment, intimidation, management of the irregular work sleep cycle, premature of the industry, the stress that comes with the daily struggle the railroad employee endures for the conduct of normal family life and event. The offenses suggest that the DRA could allow unqualified managers' determination regarding the constitute extreme all railroad managers to hide the, behind the regulation and harass employees. Even one instance of one of such harassment was encouraged by the FRA is one time too many there will be certainly by more than one in sordid history of part 240 has shown on numerous occasions declining job performance and any other subject con- concept that has no practical place in rule there is no doubt the railroads will exploit the guidance of the require of the individual who does not meet their increasing productivity standards to be evaluated by the substance abuse professional railroads are just waiting for the reason to validate the productive exemptions and will undoubtedly blame a failure to satisfy that the employee possible substance abuse and consistible that the FRA would suggest such advice and should be um, removed from preamble altogether. Refusals and failures proposed in Section 242.115e that contain several reference certification consequences for an employee who refuses to fail to provide a breath, breath or body fluid sample. The labor disagrees that uh, for failure to provide a breath or bodily fluid sample should trigger the revocation of consequences as the FRA wears the legitimate medical reason, reason that a person is unable to provide a breath or a fluid, body fluid sample. The Title 49 CFR 40 Part, so part 1 addresses the constitute refusal recognized for that there are legitimate medical conditions when an individual failure to provide with a sufficient sample that is now redeemed deem as a refusal. Title 49 um, CFR um, 219-104-A-2 requires removal of the service of, um, for refusal of the provided sample to further the failure to provide the breather bodily fluid samples to consider refusal of the absence for the documentation medical condition that prevent the individual from providing a sample therefore unnecessarily include the failure in the rule text or positive text results in addition it is to be noted that statute 219603 provided with the compliance for the employee may be exposed within in the case of the documentation medical failure emergency the rule should be amended to clarify that the person was unable to provide breath or body fluid sample for legitimate medical condition for the or emergency would consider the have the post positive test results as follows: either prior alcohol or drug connection conduct, federal um, rule compliance schedule. Consider the evaluation of statute 219.109-219.102 for this chapter. Any refusal, strike out, or failure um, to provide with the breather body with the fluid sample for the testing under the requirements of Part 219 of the chapter will be instructed to do so with the railroad representative. The period ineligible described in this section is determined in accordance with the following standards: refusal to provide with the breather body. Leave fan fluid sample the testing of the requirements of statute two nineteen of the chapter instructed to do so, but the railroad representative shall be treated for the purpose and eligibility under the paragraph in the same manner of the violation. Section two nineteen one oh not one oh two of this chapter in case of the refusal is to provide with the deer and sent specimen or sample that or section two nineteen one oh one with the chapter in the case of the refusal to provide with the breath sample of this part two nineteen subpart D of the blood specimen of mandatory pot host to accidental toxicological testing this part two nineteen subpart C. We also would point out that subpart G of the FRA control alcohol drug use of regulation ex- excuses a covered employee with the compliance for the requirement to participate in random drug testing in the case of documentation medical and family emergency see title 49 CFR 219 the same time true regarding the random alcohol testing side of see title 49 CFR 219 609 we understand that the reference to part 219's proposed section in 242 um, E2 incorporated the experience of that set forth for the subpart G we request the section and section analysis with the final rule clarify uh, for, clarify that our understanding is correct.
Statute 242.117, paragraph C for the proposed section would address the issue for the house room with the learning of the deterioration of person correctable vision of the hearing and certified conductor would have to notify the railroad is preamble. The FRA noted that the concern of the safety, state of the performance conductor certification at whether the person can notify the railroad within the set of time frame the C's said Title 75 is federal registration 69176. It's not always apparent an individual movement of the hearing of the vision of the deteriorates below the standard set form of the regulation. We concern that if this is discovered, the person has been deteriorated vision hearing acuity with the other after an excellent incident they might be subject to unwarranted additional penalties enforcement actions according to the statute 242-117-K should be amended as follows as condition main, uh, maintaining certification, each certified conductor shall notify the employing railroad medical department, or if no, so, no department exists, the appropriate railroad official. If the, the will, if when they become aware of the their the be accurate versions of the hearing of the deteriorated extent, but the person no longer beats in the one or more prescribed visions, hearing the standard requirements for the section notification is required prior to the knowing performing any subsequent services as a conductor. Section 242.119. The FRA is aware of minimum training standards as being implemented. We believe that the training provision of the rules should be coordinated with the upcoming start part 243, section 242.119, and should not be deleted and replaced as entirely as follows. Um, deleted all this, initial training should be conducted in accordance with the part requirements in part 243. 242.121. The FRA pur purposes of the training under the section cannot be open book testing. Many of the railroads open book testing today. Well, we do not believe that any of the danger of the safe operating railroad will allow rail railroads to continue conducting with the training and the knowledge of the testing with open books. Moreover, the real world of the railroad operation, one would accept the conductor to refer that his or her written uh, in rules and instruction whenever there is uncertainty about what is required a particular rule, instruction, or practice. Therefore, Statute 242.121E6 should be deleted. 242.123 is stated that there is an ongoing um, failure to lease um, some of the railroads to ensure the local of the engineer working the trains are due to the economic conditions prescribed. Provided with a timely manner complying with the testing, he resisted the addressing of the problem of the labor the FRA attempted to address the issue of ruling the section 242.123, the BF, and the required railroads to conduct the operational performance compliance testing certified conductors who have not been retested for the calendar year return of the certified service, although the section 242.123F requires the railroad to conduct and announce the Compliance with the testing of 30 days from the time the individual returned the conductor service is unclear. The individual may perform a certified conductor service until they have been tested. The FRA should address the lag time in the, in the performance provisions in the same manner that they did with the lag time for the acquiring motor vehicle record. The rule shall be made the clear employee make work of it and for 30 days pending the unannounced testing required by the statute 242.123F. The FRA amended the rule as follows. A certified conductor was performing the service required for the certified person so it's on this part, but do not, need not to give any unannounced compliance. And however, the certified conductor returns the service required certification pursuant to this part, the certified conductor shall not be deemed ineligible, must be attested to the pursuant in section 30 days of his or her return. Moreover, there is more consequence if the railroad fails to refuse the conducting testing required in Statute 242.123F. will urge the FRA to include the civil penalty for the Appendix A with the violation will the violation of the provision. The penalty should be assessed for the gay and the individual name of the program and responsible for the compliance of the program required with the Statute 242.101A6. Or subpart C, Administration Certification Program Statute 242.201, the conductor certification should be consistent with the upcoming medical standards that we are being considered by the FRA. Statute 242.211, the FRA has inc has included the requirement that the placement certificate must be provided with the employee, the not no cost to the employee. This is a fair and reasonable manner to handle this issue with we appreciate the FRA addressing it in such a con con conscious way. Statute 242.213, if the preamble of the FRA requests with regarding the instances where the person who is serving as both a conductor and engineer, a lone engineer, the RCO, or remote control operated with the involved with the revocable of that, the Title 75 Federal Registration 69-179, as also the FRA considerable addressing the provision and proposed with a section which required the railroads to make determination as to which certification with the revoke based of the work of the person performed at the time of the conducting occurred. ID, if FRA known of the end note, it's unusual to have the railroad make such determination cited with the part 225 of this example the railroad has experience making the determination we believe this reasonable approach for this question accordingly we support the FRA proposed that the revocation should be based on the work performed at the time of the incident in addition we both certifications are revoked Different lengths of time, it must be clear that the revocation period shall run with the, and concurrently with the statute 242.213. 
H1. The FRA will use the example of the individual who had the conductor certification revoked three times in, the last, in less than 36 time month period of twice an infraction of two, eight, statute 21899. Once the infraction of the stop, of a stop signal appendix may pro, um, provide the concise chart of the revocation period of the required under that scenario, but neither the rule of the appendix E is clear with the, uh, that the 30 day locomotive engineering certification revocation period for the violation of stop signal should be required concurrently with the beginning of one year conductor certification revocation period for the violation. There will be recommended in the statute 242 213H1 as we read as follows. For the purpose of determining the period for the, of which performance may not work, if the certified locomotive engineer due to the revocation of his or her conductor certification on violation of statute 242-403-E1 e, through E5 and or E12 will be counted by the person who holds the conductor, current conductor's locomotive engineering certificate who has had his or her conductor certification revoked three times in less than 36 months for the two violations of statute 242-403-E6. One violation of statute 242-403-E1 would have his or her conductor certification revoked for a year, but would not be permitted to work as a locomotive engineer for the first month of the revocation period and the period of the revocation for the one violation of statute 242-403-E1. Some part, some part D, territorial qualification and joint operations, statute 242-301. Many, um, many severe accidents, casualties, and fallacies occur when the tracks are designated other than main track, providing the job of the unqualified employees necessary responsible to cause the efficient method of improving the safety of the railroad industry. The determine the job broadly to find the working group to allow the railroad um, as many options as possible. The preamble discusses the options, such as map charts and events. Even the contact a person to alert the employee with the hazard condition that may exist in the territory, it may be aware of the hazards, such as the permit, the temporary closure, with no clearance of the condition would dramatically reduce the severe, or severe injuries and fatalities. Labor believes providing the job on no qualified employees is effective as a means of addressing the FRA fundamental mission to improve the safety of the railroad industry. Furthermore, labor conditions ultimately remedy re re fatalities of the curve with the hazard to remove the hazard. The rule recognizes the railroad may not own the right of the way or uh, one other than the main track from remaining. Removing the hazard may not be within the authority or they may claim it and the cost of prohibited. Prohibitive the sense because of the railroad cannot move the remove the hazard should not relieve or live, uh, leave the railroad from doing everything in the proper the mitigation of the danger provided with the job as such as the minimal cost that the railroad should not be relieved the requirement simply because it's an inconvenient no employee should be jeopardized the life of the health and because it is not practical for the railroad to inform the hazard them of hazards therefore they, we urge the FRA to amend the statute 242301 d as follows. If the conductor lacks territorial qualification other than the main track physical characteristics required paragraph A of the section when practical he or she shall be assisted with by a person with a certified conductor meets the territorial qualification requirements for the other main track physical characteristics were not practical for the conductor be provided as a job aid prior to the entire track entering the track. Subpart E, denial and revocation certification. Again, the FRA relied heavily on the Title 49, Part 240 for the development of subpart labor that contends the useful consideration of existing locomotive in your revocation process is discussed as how it failed much of the debate and disagreement with, with the working group center agreement uh, around the treatment of the evidence, potential evidence on the property they handle in the investigation and hearing the revocation process labor. Labor maintains on properly handling rules, disclosure, to discover the evidence, the statute 240 and 307 and dis um, pro proportional skewed against the employees who have been in charge with an infraction of the FRA requirements in statute 241-117E. The FRA should not carry out over the procedural institution as if the conductor is covered in part 242-242-401. The preamble states, the FRA welcomes con uh, comments whether the intervening with the cause of exemption, paragraph D, but it should be modified in including this recertif certification, recertification requirements in addition with the vocal events of statute 242-403 for example the paragraph could be modified to read as follows: the railroad should not determine that the person failed to meet the eligible requirements for this part shall not be denied the person's certification sufficient evidence exists for the establishment of the intervening cause preventing with the material impaired with the quality and ability to comply with the railroad operating with the rule of the practice certification recertification requirements of the forms on basis denied by the person certification recertification title 75 federal registration um, number 69181 we agree to the statute 242 Forty-two four hundred one should be modified. Um, D should be mod also be modified. Noted that above delays are occurring with the same motor vehicle driver information as they are fault within either individual nor the railroad. The FRA has proposed the main means of dealing with touch delays, which have suggested amending the slight, uh, slight, slightly steep super. Not every, not every intervening because of the card impact. The certification recertification determinations can be anticipated, nor can the rule be written off one size fits all fashion according to the revising the provision. The FRA suggests would be the fair way. way to address such problems. 
Statute 242403, the preamble explains that the criteria of vocation of the conductor certification we derived with Statute 241.17 and 243 Likewise, 242.403 would make the unlawful conductors violate any of the, of the 12 precepts identified in the paragraph E the, of this section. This being said, that the discussion constitutes appropriate action for the term used in the paragraph C2 by the conductor to prevent employees from the monitoring instruction of the piloting from the committing of the infraction should be revised to make it clear that the conductor's duty is full fly, filled by a um, warning the potential for suit violation that they should be held with the culpable to do so we recommend the effort revise the preamble discussion to reflect the following as explained in the paragraph c2 the appropriate action does not mean that the supervisor pilot instruction must prevent the violation for the occurring at all it costs rather than the duty shall be deemed to meet the warning then conductor engineering and appropriate with the potential foreseeable uh, violation c title 75 regional registration 69181 former more of a title statute 242 403 c2 240 and 242 403 e2 uh, one the proposed rules should be amended to reflect the conclusion and conclusion follows. Statute 242.403C2, the certified conductor monitoring piloting instruction conductor fails to take appropriate action preventing the violation of paragraph E, but the section shall have his or her certification revoked. Appropriate action does not mean that the means of the supervisor pilot instruction must prevent the violation occurring at all costs of duty is met by warning the conductor of the engineering as appropriate potential foreseeable violation. Statute 242.403 E21. When the conductor is located with the operating cab, the speed at which for the train was operating exceeds the maximum authorized limit by at least 10 miles per hour. When this is respected by the speed, the fact that the railroad should be considered only those violation conditional clause with the restricted speed. The clause is that it requires stopping the one half of the locomotive engine during a range of vision of the operational equipment if it. Uh, equivalent thereof, which caused the reportable accident incident under paragraph 2495 of this chapter, except the accident incidents that are classified and covered data under statute 225 um, F5 of the chapter. The appropriate action does not mean the conductor must prevent a violation occurring at all costs. The duty met by the warning, the engineer, and potential foreseeable violation. Electronic devices. The FRA also seeks to make comments for the weather the violation of final rule of the Title 49 CFR Part 220 with the restriction of the railroad operating employees using cellular telephones or other electronic devices should constitute revocable event with the conductor of locomotive engineers. Title 75 Federal Registration 69182 with the during the development of Part 222. The FRA asks for the comments of the question labor the remains opposed with the including the violation of Part 222 220 for the revocable events of the Part 240 and 242. We also understand the railroad supports the notion of the violation. 220, which should constitute the revocable event with the part 220, sorry, 240, 242. However, the review of the railroad comments is part 220. should not let the reason for the belief that the inclusion of the appropriate except for the thing that they should be a good idea to have additional means of the imposing economical hardness, hardship than certain employees that have to cover the FRA regulation with the doing so. Without diminishing the tragic consequences that have also ensued, the improper use of the proper personal electronic devices with the impl impl implicated data with the presented with the FRA leading up to the implementation part 220 with the simplified do not support the inclusion according to the FRA original. Five cardinal sins on part 240 of the designated that have the revocation consequence because of the implicated with a significant portion of more than 5,000 of the, the 6,990 6, train accidents between 1977 and 1987 in which the 20 most common engineer related human effect, uh, factors accurate errors were caused the title 65 Z6 federal registration 280. Sorry, 28235, June 19, 1991. However, the FRA experience of the emergency order of the number 26, air executive order 26, was far, far different. In the period effective date of the October order, the October 27th, 2008 to December 7th, 2009, the FRA discovered that approximately 200 instances where the order may be violated. The FRA Office of the Railroad Safety recommended enforcement action against the employee of the railroad. The 36 of the instances, all of the 36 of the action, were based on the railroad employees using an electronic device failure. To failing to have the airpiece removed from the employee's car or failing to have the device turned off in a potentially unsafe situation. Of 36 instances, approximately half of the involved with the employee using the failing to have the cell phone turned on with the, while the cab of the locomotive during the potential hazard time. In addition, with 33 of the instances, recommendation enforcement action involved individual opposing the railroad supply devices. 
Title 75, Federal Registration 27674. We believe that several conclusions can be drawn by the FRA data. Clearly, both the FRA Railroad Sufficient Rigorous Programs to detect possible violation. The FRA has not been, he has not hesitated to apply existing enforcement tools in the absence of an indication that any of these possible violations led to reportable accident and injuries. Casualty can only mean that none of the other uh, outcomes occur while they alone makes the violation of the quality of the qualitatively different from the outcome of the violation of the cardinal sin. The growing number of the potential violations are identified in the FRA sheds no light whether there is a pattern sufficient with the warning imposing the Dracon punishment um, that would result from the expansion of the Title 49 Federal Regulation 241.11. Uh, 117E, 242-403E. Numerous questions pertaining to the available data um, published by the Notice, pu pr 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 notice of Proposed Rulemaking in Part for Part 2 for 20 have not been yet answered, such as as training and testing of the executive order 26 to progress with what you expect for the number of the potential violations to decrease over the time all part for the 15 months included the person identified with the effort of the notice of what proposed rulemaking for part 2 for one with the um, that period is broken down into the three month segment which is tech trend is in potential vision um, violations the downtrend and would indicate the compliance with increasing the current enforcement methods is appropriate effective the percentage of um, potential violation occurred with the Class 1 room with the count of 95% of the freight revenue carrying the overwhelming majority of the most hazardous cargo. The percent of the potential violations occurred in Class 2 and Class 3 railroads were um, use of the portable electronics down with the train for train control purposes far more prevalent than Class 1 railroads. More because of the Executive Order 26 that was in Part 220 with the supply of different small railroads to Class 1 railroads, including potential violation. Data class two and class three railroads and railroads to provide app apples to apples. Comparisons considering whether to expand the, of the Title 49 CFR 241 117E or 24403E. The number of potential violations, how many of the violators were railroad rather individual how many remaining potential violations were committed with the employee of these railroads are they considering whether to expand the scope of the title 49 cfr 241 to 17 or 242 403e would be outrageous considering the employee violation occurred with the railroad or the railroad itself is expected to having the violation violated executive order 26 because of the no assurance that the railroad provided with the correct information concerning the executive order 26 where it sufficiently stressed the importance of the absolute um Compliance. The appropriate starting point of the re reasonable considerization question in the Title 49 CFR 242403 e 24117 e should be experienced with the data and trend with access with the respect of the potential vision, um, violation of the Executive Order 226 Part 220. For the ample employees of the Class 1 Railroad themselves different, it did not potentially violate the emergency order using existing data has been analyzed with the perspective including the statute Part 240 for the violation of the statute 222403 eventually 241 11, 17 e would be consequently ch cart before analysis of the horse. The signal aggregated with the norm, no, number of the included preamble, preamble to the notice proposed rule making for Part 220 does not provide a basis for such conclusion. It also must be noted that the FRA currently has sufficient enforcement tools at the disposal cited with the ability to direct violation and authority of the punishment of the uh, individuals who believe impermissible using electronic devices and devices the notice provision rule making on Part 240. Whether the reasonable belief of the accident was caused and affected by the railroad operating employee's action or omission, the FRA has subpoenaed the, the employee's cell phone records or other personal records if they related to the FRA investigation. The FRA does so now. Um, ID 27678. The FRA were, were to find prob probable violation of the final rule has occurred. The FRA conducted an attempt to take action on the individual employee by the way of the authority to impose the monetary civil penalty disqualification of the employee from sensitive safety um, service. ID at 27... Six eight two. Alternatively, the FRA decides to go ongoing objective ob analysis of utilization of the railroad accident data and adds Part two twenty infractions to the Title forty nine CFR two forty two four zero three E. Eventually, two forty one seventeen E. The regulation must clearly state the provocation consequences that are appropriate only when an electronic devices are improperly used for the employee performing safety related duties, such as improperly contributed with the event identified with the Title forty nine CFR two nineteen two zero one, thereby triggering mandatory post accidental tactical. Logical testing with alcohol, drugs, and overwhelming 
Majority of the operating employees would be subject to the rules of performing the duty safety and the integrity every day of the entire career, entire careers. However, the, all the human occasionally may simply forget to turn off the implies of device such as the cell phone more besides the devices currently on the market are not equipped with the standard on off switch and instead the non use the trigger sleep mode but the device is automatically powered on and up uh, on upon the opening of the cover touching the key in the screen, thereby giving the false impression of the status device. The accident incident for the FRA side of the uh, support issuing the emergency order in 27th 26th notice for purpose of the re- proposed rule of the Part 220 provide the use of electronic device with the train vehicle moving the distraction circumstances and undermine the cause of the train of those accidents and the no- notice pro- pro- proposed rule making the FRA side of seven accidents, five railroad accidents, one aviation incident, and one highway accident. Seat title 75 Federal Registration 27673 27674. Also, scientific data for the FRA side of the issue of the Emergency Executive Order 26, which was the foundation of Part 220, identified the performing additional tasks using cellular phone as the actual distraction condition with the increase of the risk of accidents. This is considerable scientific evidence, evidence that the cell phone used both oral conversation testimonies and the increase of the right of the highway accidents. Result of the driver distraction, Brown and Polton, Polton 1961, Burns, Marks, and Burton, Smith, and Birch, 2002, McCartan, Hanglong, Braitman, 2006, Parks, Luke, and Burns, Lands, 2007 Rainey, 2008 Reed and Robinson, 2008 Driver Distraction is defined in Australian Road Safety Service. TZ Stoney, Bishop, Aaron Harkness, Lango, and Smyrtle, 2006 as follows. Driver distraction, voluntary, involuntary, discretion of attention, attention with the primary during a driving task not related to impairment of the alcohol, drugs, fatigue, medical condition. The diversion occurred between the driver performing an additional task or task temporarily focusing on the objective of the event. The person not related to the primary driving ta- task, the diversion reduced the driver's situational awareness, decision making, and or performance, resulting in some incident in collision, near miss, um, corrective action, driver, and other road ruser, users. So 73, um, 73, Federal Registration 58706, emphasis added. FRA cited no evidence merely having a cell phone turned on to create an unsafe condition. Although the infinite incident at FRA relied upon indicated the actual use of the performance and additional task while the train vehicle was moving combined with the distraction condition, not the fact that the device was merely was in the on mode, the FRA alone. Loaded that the issue an on off mode within the preamble of the emergency executive order 2006. The FRA inspected with the frequent observer of the cell phone to the PDA within the reach of the locomotive engineers operating in terrain with the device rings. The locomotive engineer rarely answered the presence of the FRA inspector, but the circumstance led a responsible person to conclude that they would answer if the FRA inspector was not present. ID 58705, the comment preamble, the executive order speculated about what would happen if the phone were able for the ring. The FRA inspector was not part of the main, uh, many of the duties involved with the executive order arose with the result of discovering the employee with a cell phone turned on at the time of the operational test statute 242-403-E, even 242-241-17-E, that amended the, the ad violation of the Title 49 CFR Part 220, Subpart C. The member of the rule was based on the FRA unsubstantiated and initialized speculation. Any individual could have the certification revoked with the phone electronic device left on the near rings more, never makes noise for the individual unaware of the device. Moreover, given the railroad's unbroken and record of the consent 240 to produce results never intended for the FRA, FRA amends Part 240 revised in Part 242, then it must be cleared about the circumstances that may result the revocation consequences, especially with considering the agency and the railroad industry position, Title 49 CFR 243-07-HE. H2 minimum nature accidents and with no direction potential effect for the railroad safety. It would be outrageous penalty for the individual suffered the provocation simply because he or she inadvertently left the cell phone camera on the mode when they are on duty. Because of the rule providing with the railroad, the discretion decided not to bring the bring the provocation charges against the employer for the D minus incident has been interpreted or not included obligation that ever actually be applied. The effort needed to especially require the reasonable application promulgating getting such rule as Title 49 CFR 22305. Require the personal electronic device to be turned off to be in compliance with the rule. However, the failure to do this device turned off should not result in the revocation because there's no evidence whether, um, who's whatsoever meaning merely having the devices on the I mode to create a discretion and result in unsafe condition. Whether the railroads have been taken a position that may still revoke the certification as in D minus infractions occur, such as having the device turned on, on the no effect of the safety of the remedies of the FRA and the railroads. 
All right, 242-407. The production process of the significant debate with the deliberation of the work group with no doubt with the employees last commands and they will be afforded a fair on property hearing with a charge with the violation of operating rules that may, that may result with the production of the certification balance on property hearing with a suge is legitimate concern of labor could request the FRA strength of the disclosure to discover requirements of the revocation process which the railroad resisted with the claiming the local representative will have the railroads of will, on a wild go, go, goose chases. Of course, it takes ignorance ign Ignores the hearing of the officer of authority statute 24407 C6. Examine a request unduly representative, uh, so extensive lack in the relevance of that admission would impair the orderly, fairly resolution of the proceeding. Emphasis said that the railroad approach for the hearing with the attitude of the employee was guilty un uh, until the proven innocent of the revocation of the hearing of the process that is designed to provide the charge rather than conduct the true investigation hearing. Also, the fact that the hearing officer is always read. Railroad official primary reason for the employee rarely feels that they have received fair and impartial hearing. Despite the fact we reached the consensus proposed um, rule of the Railroad Safety Administration Co uh, Committee, working with the group of labor continues to believe that the entire reason will require the railroads to disclose the evidence produced produce the witness and relied on based on um, making a suspension de decisions. We strongly urge the FRA to consider the position expand with the clarify the several aspects of the proposed rule. All right, your labor appreciate the effort effects of the address of the discovery concerning the section 242-407-B4 with the proposed of the railroad to provide the written information list of witnesses the railroad will present with the hearing provided with the recess of the information only provided with the just prior to the command of the hearing. The language creates the ambiguity of the term just prior with the history of the part 240 instructs the railroad hearing officer with an availability and have the evitability view just prior to differently, the employees and his or her representatives will expect the hearing officer to typically deny the request for request for recess because of the determination whether the constitute just prior or the refusal to grant recess of the hearing with the suspension of grounds will impose yet another judicial burning upon the dispute process. To have any practical value, the value um, the rule must provide with some of the defin finite time cut off to provide with the written information, written to witness, list of the employees, the railroad are required to convey with the history required with the section within 10 days of the suspension notice, and the suspension notice must be based on upon the railroad's receipt of the reliable information. It is um, completely responsible and reasonable to require the information where it relies upon the reach of the suspension decision provided by the employee at least 48 hours prior to the hearing. Furthermore, the employee must be given an opportunity to evaluate the evidence of the railroad. We'll rely upon the hearing to determine the veracity of the information additional witness and employee that shall be brought into the hearing. Further, we recognize the issue of telephonic testimony compromised by the FRA with the use of the telephonic testing and several problems that must be minimized and maintain the highest possible degree of the impartial of the fairness of the hearing. The simple way, no way, hearing officer to observe the individual testing, on the other hand, with the telephone to make the reasonable credibility determination to determine if he or she is being coached or even if the person he or she claims to be for a matter of the rule processes allow telephonic testimony with it. It's a practical provided the witness to the hearing. There's no definition of what the Constitution is impractical. We predict that any time the witness has something else to do, it will be deemed impractical for the presenting of that the hearing. The undoubtedly result with the uh, operating crew review board also makes determination concerning what, what was constituted impractical, whether the employee suffered substantial harm um, because of the testimony of the witness be, be taken sub telephonically. There's no sound reason for the eyewitness of the e event of giving the reason arrived that the suspension should not be required to provide the to live testimony as a matter of the fairness of the railroad, unwilling to unable to provide live testimony for the witness for the event. The railroad should not be problem perm permitted to rely upon individual statements and testimony supporting a revocation decision. Telephone testimony should only be permitted for the witness that will provide with the general subject of the matter of testimony. Therefore, Statute 242-407-B4 should be amended as follows. No later than conveying the hearing, no whether not, notwithstanding the terms of the applicable collective bargaining agreement, the railroad conveying the hearing which will provide the person with a copy of the written information list of the witness the railroad will present the hearing if requested access start of the hearing will be granted if the information on the witness list is not provided at least 48 hours prior to the schedule conveying the hearing of the information provided with the statement the employee with the conveying the railroad, the railroad will make the employee available. Available for the examination during the hearing required in paragraph B3 of the section examination general subject matter witness only may be telephonic where it's impractical to provide a witness at the hearing. 
In addition, with the example, example the FRA used the preamble the regarding how the railroad should apply with the discretion and incident with the minimal nature, but it should be clarified as the example the 100 car freight train traveling at high speed track on the bottom of the steep of the grade with exceeds the speeding restriction of 10 miles over the front of the lead unit extends to the speed restriction, but by the third unit, the extension of the speed restriction of the train moving at a proper speed is unrealistic. A 100 car freight train anywhere left alone with the bottom of the steep grade will not be able to reproduce the speed by 10 miles an hour with a two engine line. An unrealistic example such as provided no guidance determining whether incident D minus instead of this suggests that D minus standard cannot be satisfied, therefore, therefore, and therefore be ignored. Some of the banner text examples which the engine barely touched the main banner would be carefully constitute the minimal nature of incident event with the new railroad exercise of the discretion provided with the part 240. In this regard, however, the FRA should be acknowledged that any time. Engine touches the banner, even when the engine does run over the brake or the brake dock down with the banner. The speed engine with the time of the engine touches the banner must be considerable since the contact of equipment less than an authorized console, a coupling speed of 4 miles an hour cannot be produced sufficient damage to the tri trigger restricted speed violation in an event. And again, the example provided with the FRA portrayed the D minus significant error other than the, uh, its objective is. Um, Finally, the discussion of the paragraphic step of the FRA will consider the railroads to make the faithful determination minimal nature and incidents shall be provided with the defense against civil enforcement. The acknowledgement does not nearly go far enough. We believe the FRA must provide the immune and the civil enforcement. The FRA makes such good determination otherwise provided. The railroads reluctant to exercise the good faith by making the determination first practice. Place discretion set forth in a rule compromise, um, compromise of nothing more than hollow words. A subpart F, dispute resolution procedure. Along with the local engineering certification rule, the base of the dispute with the resolution process proposed with the rule period, able to FRA recount with that early decision on the issue of the dispute, the resolution involved a significant debate over how to simply the, um, simplify the appeal. The FRA aware of the many of the appeals that occurred in Part 240 take years to resolve. Examples of the lengthy process need to resolve is the proposed rule with the FRA docket number equal EC, EQAL. 97 through 48, uh, 97 dash 48, which in beginning in 1997, not concluded with the statute 240, not concluded until, until 2014. The FRA Dr. EQAL 0613, which would petition to deny certification in 2005. More than five years later, the remains they resolved according to the FRA to consider significant simplifying dispute resolution process. Some meant adapting the following change of the book will create more expeditious result process result dispute may revise the conductor certification rules. Right, we believe the operating crew review board should be a standard size having the person assigned with the qualified to make the determination required in the statute 242505H. I and J, section 242501C, should be amended as follows. The operating crew review board should compo compose of at least three employees of the Federal Railroad Administration selected by the administrator, one who shall be an, an attorney. Um, statute 242503, proposed section 242503B5, would require the employee to supplement a petition for the review of the written documentation in his or her person with the responsible available to him or her that the documents of the revocation decision would be understand that the intent of the been provided with the employee. Opportunity to submit relevant evidence that he or she believes may support the position and not always apparent of the documentation required to be maintained. It's available to the employee according to the urge of the FRA to amend with the statute 242407B4 with the indicated the error comments on this section of proposed rule. Title 49 um, CFR 4329 uh, provided the employee the, the right to have the testing laboratory, the MRO, over the service of the agent release some inc records, including the MRA. You know if the employee of the information sometimes referred to the litigation pack half of the very vast majority of the conductors will never be about thought, but the revocation process will not typically be in the position to know the information or even when it exists that they have all the right information on familiarity caused by the conductor and consequently failure to comply with the statute 242503 will not include the litigation package of the documentation filed with the operating crew review board when the case of lit involving alcohol drug tests, the FRA should have added the requirement of the railroad notify the conductors written with the right to the acquiring the litigation package the laboratories the MRO other than service agents to disclose the conduction of the conductor on the Record record revocation hearings conducted in compliance with statute 242407B4 with the charges of violation of 242403E12. The notification should contain the minimal extent language contained in Title 49 CFR um, 403029. 242503. Um, 
See the FRA noted um, noted that Part Twenty uh, Two Forty uh, contains a different time limit and time limit for the filing petition for the review. With the depending on the whether the person seeking the review of the revocation decision, one hundred twenty days or denial of decision, one hundred eighty uh, days. The in Statute Two Forty Two Five Zero Three C, the FRA, FRA pro proposal of the petition seeking the review of the revocation denying service of decision would have to be filled with the FRA within one hundred twenty days of the day of the decision served with the petition and labor. Understand the support of the FRA's desire to make file requirements uniform. We do not believe the sixty day additional time filing. Petition with the view of the creative burden of the FRA may over the additional time is extremely valuable to an employee who had never um, had their certification revoked with the looks of the knowledge, experience, the swift research, applicable regulation, martial evidence, compa. Was arguments with a strongly effort to amend the proposed rule to provide a longer or two time period change of the statute 242503C from 520 days to 180 days. <coughs> Section 242503 he has been striked out. 242505 for the operating review for the review board, the conduct informed with the review of the petition and must have the entire record with the disposal determination what what, what may or may not be necessary for the operating review board of the review of the disapproval of the railroad certification decision can only be made after the review of the complete with a record of the section 242505G and G, F and G will provide with the operating review B with the remand of the issue you in order to the according to the informational information with the full record operating crew review would have no way of knowing there whether the information testimony requesting already contained the record this only way to ensure that there is no case that requires the review for the entire record section 242.505 shall be amended as follows. Within 60 days of the notification provided in the paragraph B of this section, um, the rail shall submit the FRA entire record of the hearing conduct pursuant to section 242.507. Later filings will only be considered with the extent and practicable. Or the operating crew bill will determine whether the denial of the provocation certification or revocation um, recertification proper under the part of based on an incorrect determination of the qualified person qual failed to meet the qualification requirements of part two granted and deny this um, petition accordingly. 242.505E. Um, as we previously stated, we continue to disagree with the minimum standard proposed for the FRA appropriate for this rule. Respect for the be strong will continue with the disagree with the FRA preamble discussion regarding with the purpose of the scope of the rule, which also states the proposed rule would be not constrained the railroad's ability to prescribe additional more stringent requirements for the conductor that are not consistent with the proposed rules. Title 75, Federal Registration 69168, emphasized added. We submit that the rule can uh, not be simultaneously established one standard for the conduct of the employees and another standard for the conduct of the employee. Therefore, the practical predictable and procedural requirements of this part must be also considered minimal the procedural responsibility of the railroad denying revocation concerning certification to allow the operating crew review by our discretion and determination whether the violation of procedural requirements for the subpart constitute the substantial establishment that they are indeed not minimum standard rendered for the substantial section right meaningless of the determination constitute providing the due um, process any process. Furthermore, the FRA operating approach will allow the railroad to open option to implement and take less stringent procedure for the denial revo re denial revocation process so part even determining whether the conductor meets the minimum requirements of part just if they have done with the imputiny over the lifetime part 248 the outcome of the FRA have the proposed the procedural rule of the hollow meaning therefore will reiterate the strongest terms of the part 242.505i should be amended as follows Standard review of the procedural issues. When considering procedural issues that the board will determine the substantial harm was caused by the petitioner virtue of the, of the failure to adhere to the dictated procedure making the railroad decision and finding of the substantial harm the ground reversing the railroad decision and establish the grounds upon the board may grant the relief. Petitioner must show the procedural error occurred with the procedural error caused by the substantial harm or violation any of the requirements of this part per, uh, per se constitutes substantial harm. Standard review of the legal issues should be consistent and refined and clear, clearly either party, party legal interpretation requesting review of the operating crew review. The rule rules should be reflected with the operating crew review. We'll consider all the legal interpretation correct with the statute 242.505J should be amended as follows. Standard review of the legal issues pursuant to the reviewing role of the board will can be considered whether the legal interpretations are corrected by de novo review. 
Section 242.505K, in Section 242.505K, the FRA stated will not consider whether the railroad properly implied with the more stringent requirements we believe the essential integrity of the rule itself, having the operating crew review board consider whether the railroad consequently consistently applied with the more stringent requirements the other than the FRA effectively would permit the railroad to apply the different standards to different people to the left behind with the regulation to allow the very disparate, errate, um, disparate, disparate treatment. The FRA acknowledged in the 1989 has repeated the vowed end without the responsibility of the authority of the operating crew review board could be rendered consequent of the decision whether one person would have their certification revoked the more stringent requirement while another person would commit exact same infraction exact same location are the same with the circumstances may not without the operating crew review board authority to consider consequent consistent application of the railroad must be stringent requirements railroad free of the continuing to apply with the FRA regulations desperate, 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 desperate partially. Um, the rule should be amended that, so that it is clear with the operating crew viewer will not consider whether the railroad properly applied with the more stringent procedural requirements. The operating crew viewer will consider whether the railroad is consistently applied with the more stringent rules than imposed with the ineligibility consequences period required in, by this rule. Section 242.505K should be amended as follows. The board, K, the board will determine whether the um, denial revokes in certification, recertification, proper use on the regulation based on the incorrect determination the person failed to meet the certification requirements of the regulation grant and deny the person and accordingly the board will consider whether the railroad be, has consistently applied the more stringent requirements but they will not otherwise consider one the priority railroad more stringent requirements or two whether the requirements were properly applied to its own more um, stringent procedural requirements section 242 505L a burning crew before written decision must include the explanation of how to which the determination, therefore, of the statute 242.505 should be amended as follows. The board written decision shall be served that the petition include the petition of review, if any, of the rear of the decision will include the finding of the facts that it was based on. As we stated above, the most of the dispute with the appeal beyond the LERB with this um, decision of locomotive engineering certification rule with the, the Title 49 CFR Part 240 to take the year to resolve the process should be simplified. The rear conduct with a fairly impartial hearing with the accordance with the subpart E with the review of the operating crew review board. The, um, should there be a sufficient um, to address the argu arguments that either the party may have, there may be be proposed new section incorporated within this to the rule of fouls. 242.505, the uh, decision of the operating crew review where it constitutes final agency action. The request for the conduct hearing um, should likewise be simplified and expedited with as much as possible the revocation hearing conducting in accordance with the subpart E, which is actually 242.501 through 242.505 are modified in the amendments accord and forth with a de novo review of the kind of case the redundant delay the dispute and the debate. dispute therefore recommended as follows modification of the proposed rule. 242.507. Either the petitioner before, um, before the board of the railroad involved with the may seek the administrative proceeding in the prescribed in statute 242.509 and the operating crew review board shall have the sole discretion whether to conduct a hearing. Any hearing may be limited to the operating crew review order to issue any of the deems appropriately necessary to be determined in the matter. And then um, B's all scratched out, C's all scratched out, e, D's all scratched out. One D one scratch out, um, two scratch out, three scratch out, E B. Upon receipt of the hearing request, the operating crew board shall arrange the appointment of the presiding officer who shall schedule the hearing of the earliest practical date. 242.509. Presiding officer commanding the presiding over the hearing of the hearing shall be defined the relevant facts to determine the color correct application of this part of the, of the, to those facts. The presiding officer may be um, authorized to discover the type of the quantities of the presiding officer's discretion with the contrary reading of the prior hearing unduly burdening of the party. The presiding officer may impose the improper uh, and appropriate sanctions in accordance with the provision of federal rules of the civil procedure, including the limitation of the presentation of the evidence issued with any of the parties with the failure of the refusal to comply with the approved discovery requests. Whenever the party has the right to require to take action with the um, period prescribed by this part of the law regulation directed with the presiding officer presiding with the main extent with such period without with or without notice, God covers the provided with another party with a substantial pre pre prejudice such as the extension request of the extension of the period with the already expired with the may be undied, undenied as untimely. 
Discovery shall be conducted within accordance with the procedural set forth in the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. O. The proceeding officer shall imply that the Federal R R Rules of Evidence in the United States Court of Modern Magistrate, the uh, General Guidelines and Introduction of Evidence, notwithstanding paragraph M of the section, all relevant private probative evidence shall be received unless the presenting officer determines the evidence shall unduly repetitive and expensive but lacking the relevancy that admission would impair improperly on order orderly fair res resolution of proceeding. P. The presenting officer may. One administrative oath and affirmations. Two issue subpoenas provided in the statute two oh nine with seven is part two oh nine of this chapter. Adopt the need of the procedural submission evidence in the written form. Examine the witness for the hearing, convey the recess recess adjoining otherwise regulated with the course of the hearing, take any other action um, authorized with the consistent provisions of the part permitted with the law that may be expected by the hearing aid of the disposition of the proceeding. Here the petitioner before um, and the railroad involved in the taking the certification shall be the parties may participate in hearing and may appear to be a period be heard on that behalf of the designated representatives all parties may offer the relevant evidence including testimony may conduct such cross-examination witnesses may be required to make the record of the relevant facts um, are the parties. Seeking resolution of issuing of the shell have the burden proof burden of proof of preponderance of the evidence And then the rest of that's scratched out, or scratched out. At the close of the record, presiding officer shall prepare written record of decision to the operating group of order and proceedings. The decision one, decision one shall contain the finding of the fact conclusions, as well as the basis for concerning all material issues. The fact laws there. The record shall be observed on all to the proceedings. Is not pre 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 present pre presidential. 245.11. A party may file an appear, appeal for the operating crew or file a decision presented to the administrative office. Well, that struck through. All right. Um, appendix A should be several penalties not persistently included in Part 240. Um, section, um, appendix A, statute 242.107C, reclassifying otherwise valid certification 5,242.11.15F1I, failure to make honest evaluation 10,242.123 for the F, failure to conduct test 9,513,000. 9, we would like to thank the FRA for the opportunity to comment on the proposed rule re specifically submitted by the Dennis R. Pierce, North National President of the Brotherhood of Local Money Engineer. Um, train Hood and Mike Further, inter international president, UTU, um, Union, Tr United Transportation Union.